Okay, this is the uh, the last part before I go ahead and load this up. Uh, but I thought that I would show you that I what I was talking about. And I'm going to show you how I did the setup for this now. The first thing that I did is I got a piece of scrap eighth inch wood because you don't want to mess up your. I only had a very small amount of wood for the cowl side. And I set it up here and I traced it out. The angles. Of course we're going to do that on the other side as well because we have a different shape over here with this. But you want to do this side first, the one that doesn't have the cutout. I transferred this shape onto the uh, pieces of quarter inch So we have a, a piece of quarter inch uh, side and then the, uh, the other side that has the notch or the opening for the exhaust. And that goes on the other side. Now the next thing you're going to want to do, this is a piece of three quarter. You're going to want to cut a piece of three quarter or whatever your bottom block is. And you're going to want to cut it small enough that it just fits inside the tank compartment. Because we're going to glue these pieces on, onto, the, uh, onto the block. Make sure I got it situated right. I don't. There we go. Let me zoom out a little bit. So we're building we're building a box basically. One piece goes on one side. One piece goes on the other. And what I do is I set it up there and I hold it in place so that it's all lined up down good and square and then just to drop a CA to hold it in place while we're test fitting I've made a filler block and this, this piece is inch and a half by whatever it has to be and that goes in here as such. Nope. The filler block goes there like so. And you just kind of jockey it around until it fits perfect. And hold it. Pinch it together. Then you're going to tack it. Except on this one, I think I'm going to. I didn't get it sanded very well. There seems to be a slight raise there. So I'm going to cut the block back apart. That's why it's only a tack. I do like everything to fit perfect. Measure 
twice, cut once. Why does that not want to lay down there? Right? Stay a little bit more. Sand off the uh, CA today. Pull it on there. Sit down nice. If I wasn't doing this movie, I'd have it done by now. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. I'll be back in a second. Okay. What we have here now is we're going to glue in the filler block. This piece here, I've drawn the uh, the nose ring line on it, and you set that on there like so, and then we're going to set the cowl on. We want to make sure that it's lined up with the side. It's a few thousandths larger so we can sand it. And we want to make sure that it's up tight against the nose ring. And then just pinch it together. And then tack it. I suggest tacking everything before you glue it all down <clears throat> that way in case there is a mistake you can cut it apart and that looks good so now we're going to go ahead and glue it so just run the glue down there the seams. Uh, too much glue. <laughs> it's good and strong. <laughs> There was a question sent to my email about what piece of equipment to buy first. Now, the, the three pieces of equipment were belt sander, drill press, scroll saw. My preference is to buy the belt sander first, belt disc sander combination. Because you're going to do a whole lot more sanding than you're going to do cutting or drilling. So now we have a, uh, a block, and I'm going to come over here to the uh, belt center and I'm going to clean it up, square it up. get too excited about squaring it up because we're going to shape the heck out of it. So 
set it on there. Now we're going to draw the profile of what it should look like. Well, I don't know what it should look like, so I set it up here and I kind of envision what I want it to look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut that shape in it. this shape cut in it. Well, back to the belt sander and square it up. Well, you've just seen how fast it takes to rough shape the cow. Not a big deal. And uh, I'll go ahead and cut the camera. I know that some of you guys want to see me sand or whatever, but it's really boring to, to watch somebody carve and sand. I, I, can't, I can't teach you how to do it on the internet. So we're just removing whatever doesn't look like a cow. Until we have this desired shape. So I've marked it out where it tapers in. We have the uh, we have the line for the nose ring. So that we don't go past that because we want that to flow very nicely. Oh man. Small disaster. Gotta cut the camera. <clears throat> okay, now what I'm doing with this is I'm still roughing it out where I've drawn the lines on this. I'm taking uh, 80 grit and I'm pulling it down to shape. This this cow making business is uh, <laughs> quite the process. There are 
a few good cow makers. Uh, Ted Fancher is one of them. He is by far the best cow maker in the business. Well, I had a roll of sandpaper and I don't see it. Must have flipped off the bench when I when I dropped the uh, <laughs> the dope on the floor. Oh well. Have to find it. Hmm. Anyway, we're uh, cutting, carving, sanding this particular piece to shape. And it will take me several hours to do this. The actual uh, laying up the, of the cow, you saw that I put it together in about 15 minutes. It's the carving, sanding, and shaping that really, really takes the time. But, I wanted to show you how to get it roughed in anyway. The next thing that I will do is I will mount it before I go any farther. I'll get the uh, plywood ring and the dowel that goes here and I'll make the one screw mounting in the back. That way it doesn't move. I can sand it right on the airplane to shape. And that's the best way to do it, I think, to get it mounted up from the get-go and then just carve and sand it to shape as needed. And that way it looks like it was uh, built on the airplane, which it was. Like I said, there's a hundred ways to do all this stuff. It all gets uh, 64th plywood on both sides, on the cowl and on the on the fuselage, and uh, that'll that makes a nice mating seam, nice clean edge. I can't believe the cost of that stuff. Our local hobby shop wants fifty-three dollars for a two foot. No, it's one foot by forty-eight inches. I bought it from uh, National Balsa for $23, so half the cost from uh, one of our advertisers. So, and it, that was uh, including shipping. So I suggest that you support our advertisers. All those banners up there on uh, on Stun Hanger. That helps support the site. Support the advertisers. Stunhanger gets supported. And, uh, and that helps keep us open. So I'm going to cut the camera. I'll go ahead and load this up, make the movie. And uh, while it's loading up, I'll come back and carve and sand on this and get it ready to go. Matter of fact, I'll get it mount it up is what I'll do the next uh, the next part of this project we might even before we uh, go any farther we might put the 64th fly down so that the plywood gets sanded to shape along with everything else 
a lot of times I, I don't do that. I do the plywood last, but that is the nice thing about model airplanes. You, there is no set way or set sequence that you have to do anything in. You can change it up. I have a set way, set process that I go through and it's worked for me over the years, but it's not set in stone. So let me uh, make the movie and uh, enjoy. There'll be some more on this and we're going to here shortly show you painting and filleting and I got a lot of painting to do here shortly. So we'll see you in a bit. Well, I'm just going to add this to the other uh, part of the movie. I did not get it loaded up. I just got so much going on. But uh, what I thought I'd do before I do load it up is show you where I'm at. I'm just tinkering now. I put it all together, put the nose together, put the engine in to see where our muffler is going to come out. Well, I thought I had it plotted out correctly. I want to be able to have the, the option to use this muffler and it seems that I've just not clearanced it enough so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to draw a line and cut it with a scalpel and I'm going to have to re-lay the 64th ply in there. I, I had 64th plywood already laid down in this but in order to be it now is the time to do it I don't want to wait and not be able to do it till it's finished or whatever man so I'm going to have to look at it from a different angle, so I'm going to cut the camera and I'll be back in a second. <laughs> 